Anybody here? All right, let me configure my cameras again real quick. You guys can see me? I'll be there in a minute, Ty. Don't worry. I turned the exposure down just now. No, like even when I watch it another time. Okay. Then we'll end the stream. Oh, you see me? I didn't end the stream. Oh, well, you had your mouse over there. I'm going to fix my cameras. All right, good. We're good. But also, like, your layout was, like, off by a couple of pixels. But we can do that this is not the time. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> your help. <laughs> All right, I think we're back. I think that fixed it. So OBS downloaded a new thing. Let me fix this real quick, whoops. Okay. Let's do overhead and let's fix this. Let's see if that's, is that good enough? Can you guys see, is that bright enough? I think we need to fix that a little bit too. Now it's dropping frames again. Hi, thank you for the cheer. Aw, Belos, that's so sweet. You're subscribing again. <laughs> it does say that it's dropping frames a little bit, so let's see if I can make this a little bit brighter. Um, bear with me. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta fix my exposure because now it's so dark. Ooh, there we go, that's better. Okay. Did it go back to being dark? Pretty laid back? Yeah, the 100 for Mike. Aw, that's so sweet. Um, Real quick, I wanna talk about, hold on, let me fix this. I see that it's still, still being picky here. I think my, there we go, we'll fix this exposure business. Apply, okay, done. Okay, we're good. Thank you so much. Did I fix it? Can you guys see me okay? Give me some thumbs up, give me some emotes if it looks good. Good. Um, real quick, I want to take a second and talk about the group giveaway, or not giveaway, group, group order. The group order for the um, Ancient One bus that we're going to be ordering. Awesome. Oh, I'm so glad. So relieved. Um, real quick, I'm going to pull this up on screen so you can see this. Um, down in my profile, there's two links to the Ancient One. You can see this photo is over it. He looks like a Cthulhu guy with a big... Um, anchor over his shoulder okay go into my profile on, tw on Twitch and you can find him and there's two links one link is to the discord where we're going to be discussing him and putting wh whips and um, talking about our progress for the for the paint along and the other link is for North Americans to reserve their copy if you're from North America Mexico um, US and Canada, you can reserve your copy through that web form link. And in fact, let me do paint along, exclamation point paint along, I think is the command. If one of my followers wants to do that for me, I don't know where my keyboard went. Where's my keyboard? Oh, that's irritating. <laughs> oh, here it is. Phew! Exclamation point. Paint something, paint along. There we go. Thank you, Cat Herder. You're awesome. <laughs> now he's going to have a bunch. It says, um, don't miss out on the group order for the paint along. So if you're from North America, click over to that link and reserve your copy. I'm going to be taking, um, taking names until the 7th of September. As soon as the 7th of September hits, I'm going to, I'm going to make my, I'm going to place an order 
um, tell Faustos how many we need. He's going to give me a price. They're fifty dollars each. If you if you want one, if you want more than one, you can put that down as well. <laughs> Third is for the link for all the lepers in Australia to get their copy. No. <laughs> Um, Joanne, after I get the, the order placed, Faustus is going to give me a coupon code and all of my international friends are going to be able to place an order with the coupon code so that you'll be able to get your copies and he'll ship those to you directly. So the reason for the group order is so that people in the U.S. will be able to not have to pay international shipping. Um, everybody should get about the same discount on the model though. You'll be able to pay 50 USD for the model. If you live outside the US, you're gonna have to pay regular shipping. Yeah, it's gonna be an awesome paint along. So it's gonna be a great way to learn a lot and um, be able to have an awesome bust at the same time. We did this We did this before with Carl Reddick's Vampire Bust and you can go look at all of those videos on YouTube. Exactly, Bob Ross style, exactly. So his name is The Ancient One. Um, like I said, after after I invoice everybody, after Faustos gives me the total, I will invoice everybody for the $50 pay Faustos. Then he's going to get them made, ship them to me for free, right? I'm going to get them to the U.S. And then I will ship them out individually to everybody in, in, uh, in North America, right? So then... Over the next month or so, I'll do kind of like I'll paint him myself to get an idea of how I'm going to teach you guys. And then um, the paint along will probably be in October, September, October-ish, I think, or November. Either way, we're going to do the paint along before the end of the year, no matter what. That was like a promise I made. Also, this is a subscriber only paint along. You'll be able to see the videos after the fact if you're not a subscriber because um, I'm going to put them on YouTube, but you won't be able to do it with us unless you're a subscriber. The good news is I'm going to get this all done in one month, so even if you do dis decide to subscribe, you will only need to subscribe one month for $4.99 right, for the paint along. So it's not a big expense for anybody. It's a good deal. But it's a way, this way, my subscribers are getting something a little special, right? And that's also for just helping and everything. Yeah, that's true. You know, there's enough Australian spears on my stream um, below. There's enough Australians that we might be able to get a special Australian group order. If you want to, if you want me to put together a web form for that, um, send me a whisper if you're Australian and you watch this, okay? That way I can get an idea and maybe we can get, if I need somebody to help organize it though, I need somebody trustworthy that's going to send these to us, you know, to the other Australians. Is this going to happen on a weekend date or maybe weekday? That's a good question. Um, the paint along, I think, shouldn't we do it? On, we should probably do it on a weekend. That way everybody, we could do it on weekends. If we did it on weekends, then everybody would be able to do it, right? Or do people work on weekends? That's a good question. Normally, I would be just um, doing it on, during my normal stream, Rin Twin, because that way I don't have to disrupt myself. Um, and then people can watch the VODs. I don't know. <laughs> Joanne says I'm not trustworthy. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the medals. Before we drop anything else, drop any more. Here we go. We've got our our lovely Batty Batty McBatterson, and we're gonna paint. Um, let's do some bronze on him, which means I need a bronzy color. I've got all this silver. Where's all my bronzes? All right. So since this is an intermediate class, I can show you some things that are a little bit more tricky okay so here's a bronzy color Ooh, this is called negro gold this is nice all right i'm gonna put this one on my i'm gonna make his main armor bronzy 
Okay. His helmet is silver. His weapon is silver. Let's make his chest plate this dark, dirty gold, okay? Ooh, yeah, just that. Okay. So then some of this can all, okay. I'm, try, I'm just mapping this out in my head. We'll make this little skull and part also this dirty gold. This little part. This is all base colors, okay? Let's do the rest in silver. Hey, Trader Legions. Are there any additional picks of the bust? Um, I think if you go to Abyssal, Abyssal, A-B-Y-S-S-O-L, and or you could Google the ancient one, Abyssal, I think he has a blog post about it. I would put them up right now, but I wanna get this, I wanna get this done since we lost a bunch of frames. All right, I'm just getting my base colors done of all my metal here. This is the black, this is the darkest of my silvers. And then his little shoulder pad, okay. Wow, I would rather buy these cooler looking boutique paints. I feel like I rely too much on finding the right title color as opposed to learning to accurately mix color. Mixing color is so invaluable, Rin. What I do is um, just practice, practice mixing your colors. It makes such a big difference. Someone said not to put me metallics on your wet palette as the metal flakes can migrate through the paper and potentially cross cut contaminate other paints. I don't know who told you that, but with the Red Grass Games palette, I've never had that happen. If you see, it's more like my inks are gonna migrate through and they don't cross contaminate anything. The membrane works pretty well. I've never had a problem with that. I don't thin them very much below. Metallics, I want to keep relatively, you know, whatever thins, it's just whatever comes through my wet palette. Not, not a lot. All right, at this point, like I said, I'm just base coating my metals on here. I'm gonna go ahead and paint that horn metal also just so that everything is the same. Everything, anything is cheap. Yeah, you can get apple barrel colors at craft stores. They need to be thinned a lot, but they work, they work fine. I've seen people paint with them. Um, they're either not formulated for minis though. So you might have a little problem with how pig, in the pigment might be a little big. You're not gonna get really, really detailed stuff. Notice that this is black. Black primer is going to look really good with a silver, silver paint on top of it. Yeah. Okay. So he's he's almost ready to go. I've got lots of stuff back here. Let's get his whole little leggy. There you go. You, yeah, it was the first you heard it. It was a painter on YouTube. Okay, so listen, even me, take everything every painter says with a grain of salt until you experience it firsthand yourself just because everybody's opinions are different and the, you know how the internet works. Cross-reference everything. Ask people just like you asked me. It's a great way to learn. All right, so this, again, I'm... I'm kind of over brushing my silver onto this, this leg because it's going to be really dark anyway. Do you notice how the black makes, makes my shadow? And I don't really need a shade there. All right, get this kneecap.
I'm glad I'm, I'm practicing this with you guys though because I'm learning so much about how I'm gonna paint this model and how I'm gonna teach this. This is the first time I've taught true metallics. All right, I've got my silver on there. Now, you're gonna be surprised, but what I wanna do is I wanna use a, a flat paint for my shadow instead of, um, instead of a, um, I'm gonna use this petroleum gray, it's a dark, dark gray. See, it's a dark gray like that. This is for my silvers. You wanted to ask someone if someone you trust more. I mean, different wet palettes are different, so maybe for his wet palette's true. Joanne says, I've used metallic heaps on a wet palette. Had, an issue, had the issue described when using baking paper. Never had the problem with the red grass games paper. That's, see, that's just what I said. Good, I'm glad. I'm gonna mix. All right, so starting with this gray, I'm going to poke this into the shadows of my metals, okay? Because, and there's a reason for this. Actually, where's my nightshade purple? This is burgundy wine. That will work pretty well, too. Burgundy, you want a dark, dark color for your shadows. I'm going to mix this with my gray and see what I get. See if I can get a darker color. Yeah, that's pretty good and dark. So my shadow, it's okay if my shadow is colored. I just want it to be flat because flat color there we go that's much better and I'm just gonna poke this into the recesses of my metallics and on the edges of things how did I prime this mini I used zenithal priming there's a lot more people in here now a lot more people chatting that's good um so again, here's the, here's the dark recesses of his eyes. We're gonna, you're gonna have to thin out some of this so that it blends over there, blend it out into the recesses. You want the flat paint. Pref I think preferably a, a dark color is better. Let's try dark purple and see what happens. Oh, that's a gorgeous color. Look at this. This is dark purple. I'm going to mix it with my burgundy wine. Dark purple by Creature Caster, but it might work even better. Oh, yeah. We're going to poke this into the dark recesses, and I'm not using a wash, okay? But I'm going to put it in the spots where you might have a wash. Now, I took a metallic metal class from Michael Proctor one time, and he taught with the Reaper Clear colors, but it's the same, same idea where you're wanting to shade with a flat color. See how I did that on the side of that? And then you have to think about where your shadows are. One of the things I do is I look at where the light from the, like the, overhead light is and then I'm going to paint paint my shadows where I actually see see the shadow on the model I'm, pa I'm painting on the shadow that the overhead light is is creating it's everybody yeah I'm going to try to get everybody uh, to have a wet palette in my class I will be teaching at ReaperCon <laughs> next week citizen null Okay, did I miss anybody's questions? Let's see. You're gonna use the re red grass palette and paper, and you can, you can just buy the palette paper and, and use their sponge. Um, speaking of red grass, do exclamation point red grass. If you want to buy a palette, um, it doesn't, you don't actually buy it from me. I just get a little kickback. So there's a little divot right here where his wrist armor meets his hand armor. This purple is actually perfect. 
and I'm just, I'm doing all my little outlines, right? All my shadows, I'm, it's almost like sh shell shading. Shell, sh shell shading. Shell, cell shading, cell shading. Oh my gosh. Okay. See how that shadow is nice and dark. Look at the difference between those two right now. And then if I want to do this side, again, I'm going to go in the crevice for each thing. Let's use a mixture of that purple with that burgundy wine to make an even darker color. Don't use black. Black flattens things out. I tend to like to use purples and blues for shading my silver metallics anyway. Okay. So he's getting all cool looking now. This whole part of this blade is going to be shaded. The cool thing about this particular method for true metallics is that it's, it's an easier version. It's basically a lot like your non-metallic metals but it's a little bit easier. All this in here is gonna get shaded. Ooh. See that right here? You have to think about where the light is hitting it. Do, do exclamation point red grass wind twin, rin twin, and that way you can, sh you can uh, see how to get a red grass games palette. Am I going to be using non-metallics in the shadows? Yes, that's what we're doing right now in order to not get false reflections. Yes, we're, we're not only, we're painting in our shadows completely, right? So you don't get any kind of false reflections, just like you said. And we can give extra layers if we want things to be darker because it's a little bit thin start. Go under his kneecap. That's this is all like sh needs to be shaded, shaded here, toward the back. Once we get our highlights in there, so it's gonna look like poo. It's gonna be like non-metallic metal. It's gonna look like poo at first, and then all of a sudden we're gonna put those those bright highlights in, and then it's gonna look amazing right here. This is gonna get some shadow, all in up in here. Dark, 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 right? Oh, I need actual black now. Let me use this gray, that'll work. Let's just paint that back down there in gray because it didn't get any primer on it. Let's see if that got, okay. The gray actually works better because really that's not gonna get hit by this whole part right here is gonna get shaded. You want one? You just received a cheesy wet palette in the mail today and you want to replace it immediately. Oh no. Thank you for the follow, Citizen Null. All right. Now for my next color. Aw, Pelican Paints. Mad love. Thank you so much. Welcome to the class. Memnor Pelican Raid. How's everybody? We're, we're doing um, a demonstration of what I'm going to be teaching in my ReaperCon classes. For those of you, um, we just taught my basics class where we taught how to paint a basic mini. And now we're doing true metallic metals. If you had known about this one, you wouldn't have wasted a few bucks. <laughs> that palette is classy. It is classy. Okay, so we just got done. For those of you guys who just joined us, thank you so much. Palooka. Palooka, I just said pel pelican paints. I'm so sorry. Palooka paints. Mad love. Thank you for the, thank you for the raid. Let's give, a sh let's give some hype, okay, for Palooka. Now, you can see where I'm looking, we were, um, who was it? It was one of our, one Citizen Null just asked if I was going to use, um, to keep false reflections in the shadow areas, and that is exactly right. We're painting with a flat color in the shadowed areas, but not just to keep the false reflections out, but to create greater contrast. Hello, how are you? Hi, the Howell family, how are you? So yeah, 
now I'm going to take my silver, which is my, my next, I've got my triad, right? I've got metallic medium, I've got my silver color, and then I started with my, where did it go? My dark metal, dark medium light. You might not need too much of this. This is, this is almost a highlight. That's the thing about metals, is that you don't need a ton of mid-tone with it. You good? Good. Really like the silicone. All right, so watch this. I'm going to right next to, right next to my shadow, I'm going to begin my little highlight, right? Anywhere I've got a, a, a shadow, see I've got shadows right there by the little thing, and I'm going to outline. I'm going to outline. The, the edges of the armor with the silver, right? And any little rivets. That's the thing about armor is everything gets, every edge gets a highlight. Even if it's in shadow, the edges are always highlighted. See that? That pops. Same thing with these little, right there. Over here, every one of these little edges, and it's a little slow, but it looks really good. Okay, I really need a PDF for this one. There we go. Catching all those little edges right there in the top. This is the most important one because that's getting the most light. Okay, right here. Same thing, edge, edge, edge. This little edge right here. Look at what a difference that makes. An arm um, all around his, the eyes get an edge. Fun fact, there is a brand of office stuff called Pelican, that's true. They have paints and and paddling for kids. Okay. Get the edge of this um, little beak of his helmet too. See the difference? And then the, the under eye part as well gets a highlight. You just want to be careful. be really exact. Okay, we're getting good with this now. It's starting to look nice. Now think about cylinders, right? Remember we I told you we're, we put a, a strong highlight right by that. Cylinders, look at the barrel of my brush. You can see how the white highlight is right next to the dark. The dark part is the shadowed part, the part that we painted with the flat color, right? Cylinders always have straight up and down highlights. Pal oh, plasticine. Ah, cool. And pla they have paints and plasticine. Plastiline. All right, so I'm going to paint a little highlight down the center of this armor because this arm is a cylinder, right? And I can do another one right by that. Ooh, that looks a little stripey. Let's do another shade. We're gonna do another shadow right here, a thin one. Just a, eh, I don't know if that worked. Okay. Did my little shade right there. Some of this, it looks a little too a little too dark, so I'm going to thin that out. Now let's put the highlight on this ridge. And on that little part right there. On the top of this, you have to think about where's the light. And I use the light from, I use the light from the uh, overhead as my guide. All right, so now again, there's an, there's an edge right here. I'm going to paint that with the 
silver. And there's another edge right here. Right, all that gets. And I just noticed that each one of these should have like a little drop shadow, but they don't. So I'm gonna give that in, in there right now. When it's time, I'll see the inside of, in between each finger gets a shadow as well. Is he looking metallic or is he looking like paint? I think he's looking like metallic, doesn't he? I think you understood it correctly and I wrote it wrongly. <laughs> That's okay. All right, let's do this little knee. I feel like I need to paint a few more shadows in here. Make sure those nice purple shadows cover everything that's, see each one of these little ridges gets a line. And then when we paint our highlight in there, it'll, it'll pop that much more. Okay. Let's do my silver. See, over here. Get your edges. This little thing down here has a little bit of a line. Fingers. Mm. These are small enough, you can just highlight them. You don't need to go worry about shading everything, or shading everything, yeah. These little dots are gonna get highlight. Now that they have a drop shadow in them and a little silver ridge. Right there is the edge. See, little highlights. The smaller the part, the shinier it's gonna be, the less like it, it's gonna, it's gonna have more of a high, high finish, right? The little dots are just gonna be straight up highlights. Okay. Now, on swords, and swords are the hardest thing for me to paint, but again, let's go around all of our edges first. That's the easiest thing to start with. This is with the silver. Edge, edge, edge. Now remember we painted that dark shadow on the bottom of the blade? That's because it's not receiving highlights. So that means we need a high highlight right next to it. Right, so there's, there's our highlight and blend that into the midtone. So that is looking sharp. Might need extra, see that? Oh, you can kind of see the line there. So might need to blend your base into it a little bit better. You can use a wash also on that part. If you wanted to make it look like hammered metal, where it's not perfectly smooth, you would tap. I'll show you. Let's see if I can give you an example. So let's do, let's do this little part here. So if I want that to look like hammered metal, first I'm gonna put my little shade where I want it. So I've got my little shadow. And I can blend that up into that a little bit better. So I'm gonna kill my, kill my reflective qualities. That needs to dry. And then I take my silver. Dry faster. And I'm going to tap, this is not the best brush for it. The best brush is like a little bit of a, actually a synthetic is the best brush for it. Let me see if I got one. Synthetic that already has a little bit of a curl is the best brush for tapping. All right, I'm gonna use this. And I'm going, first I'm gonna paint my edge, right? I need my edge. Do, do, do. Make sure to get that edge. This is, this is synthetic with a little curl to it, so it's not gonna be completely. Um, and I'm gonna tap, like, And that is a really 
good example of there, the dots are getting closer together where things are more reflective, right? By the little edges of these little points, it's going to be more there. I don't know if you can see that. I might need to deepen my shadow more. Let me add a little bit of this burgundy. Let's try this. Let's let that dry. This is a good question. Red grass brushes, they really aren't. They're really pretty nice. Velcro for your for your money though are probably best priced for what you get. Okay, dot 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 dot. I'm just tapping. You might need to do different layers. Let me try a little bit of this darker layer on top. That kind of looks okay. I don't know for sure if I had the right brush for it. Now let's get the sharp parts over here to be more highlighted. That's with just the silver. And same thing right here. Okay, so everything is roughly to the place now, I mean, I've got most of my shiny bits highlighted. This is, the, this is the more important one here. You can use your metallic medium. This is going to make it pop. What's the different painting properties between synthetic? So synthetics, they're just going to wear out on you a lot quick, quicker. They're a little bit more stiff, so they're good for things like stippling, um, if you get a, if, if you get one with short bristles, they're they're probably a little better for putting eyes. Oh, thank you for, there we go. Thanks, Lamunis. All right, so now I'm going to put some of this metallic medium on my brush. This is my. This is the ding. This is where, this is the equivalent of white, in non-metallic metal. Okay, so I want you to see this, because we've got some dings already. But watch what happens. When I add this to this, this is going to get added to like little ding things on rivets on the very top points, edges, like the very top points, think points. So over here, right on the very top of his helmet and on the very, see, that's going to work right here. This is pointed. It's just going to get very shiny on the part that is the, the brightest, right? Okay. Let me do that little thing right there. Um, so I'm just, I'm not putting it on everything, just the dings. The little parts that's going to gleam. All right, so there's a little rivet here. All right, on the top of that highlight right there, right? And then that little edge of that armor, the edge of this, this is a point. This is a point. So now he's starting to get very shiny very quick, right? And it's because we dirtied him up to begin with. So the dirtier and darker your armor is, the more shiny things can actually end up looking. That's something else I learned from Michael Proctor. He's also teaching a metallic metals class. I'm sure it's going to be a little different from mine, though, because he has been teaching it a lot longer than me. And he also, um, let's see, I'm trying to get these edges. He also, um, has taken classes from different people than me as well. I've been take I've taken a lot of non-metallic metal classes and that's what has informed a lot of my metallics, my true metallics. Watch this. I'm going to do my little beaten beaten thing there. See that got a little bit better cuz that's a little bit higher. And I'm going to 
Try to get this edge to be the highest in reflective. Same thing with these. It's looking good. I'm happy with how he's looking. Let's see what you guys have to say. Got a split. All right, go get some food. Thank you so much. Your old eyes don't do little things. Uh, I have old eyes too, Joanne. You can do it. It's just a. It's just a little. A little bit of. Let's let's do it on the side of this boot. I'll show you. So like you look where the where the overhead light, where those dings are, and that's where I'm gonna put those little dings. Right? Look at that. Just over here. So I'm looking where the over. Where is the overhead light? hitting for my for my reflections use the natural light and again down the down this you can see how the goes down the center of the boot and down the to the tip see that if, you, if I'm looking at the overhead light it's like right here and right here right here the, the light kind of follows down. Same thing here. So that's our metallic silver in a nutshell. Let's see if I can do this little spot right here, right? Because that's the tip. That's the part, the pointy bit. Pointy bits are going to get the dings. Ah! So definitely right here. Yay. Bing, bing, bing. Okay. Do I have enough time to show you gold? For damage, how would it look in highlighted area versus the shadow area? So it's going to be similar to what we did with the beaten part here, um, I think. Let's see. Hmm. Damage. Okay, damage. Watch this. So I'm going to be putting a little scratch right here. Right? It goes go all the way through. goes through the shadowed part. But the difference is the highlight is going to be sharp. Right? You're going to treat that like the ding. That's going to go, um, let's see, it's going to go underneath your scratch and it needs to be very thin. Let's see if I can make this happen here. Does that see that? How that's little scratch? Let's do one on, let's do one on here. And then let's underline it with our, our shadow. So we did the highlight on top. Actually, we need to do the, do we do the scratch on top or this? And I can't remember which one it is. Yeah, this, the, the scratch goes, the scratch goes on top and the highlights underneath it. That makes more sense, I think. Somebody tell me if I'm wrong. So I can, I can reverse it if it's, tr if it's not true. Oh, that's good. Ooh, that's a bad one. I'll use my base to, to fix that. So that's, that line needs to be a lot smaller. Can you see my damage right here on that one? Eswaro, is that how I say your name? Welcome, you're right. So it's the highlights underneath. Let's do that again. This isn't the best model to do all those kinds of highlights and stuff because it's so small, it's hard to see. But basically, yeah, 
little little scratches and stuff, but they need to have both a highlight and a shadow also. That's what I was taught. Kinkies, good, I hope that helps. Let's do the gold. He's got this old gold. Let's do a few things in gold here. Let's do, let's do this tops of his shoulder pads. That looks pretty cool. Yep. They're already colored a little bit. And we can do these little skulls on his kneecaps also. It's hard to see that one because it's underneath, but let's do the rest of this. Shoulder pads. One of the cool things about showing met metals is you don't have to paint the whole model. You can if you want, but you don't have to. What are we on? How are we on time? It's eight. Okay, we, we gotta, we're gonna have to do the skin tones in a minute. Finish this. Now for the gold, it's the same thing. I'm gonna use more burgundies, because you gotta think cold, cold for metals that are cool, which silvers are cool. Golds are warm, so we want warm shadows. So I'm using the burgundy as my shadow for my warms. Going again, going in the in the shadows for everything. Make that depth where the light isn't being where the light can't hit it, it can't glimmer, it can't shine. So it's okay to have a completely burgundy shadow over it. Let's do a drop shadow on this little widget or whatever that is. You can just paint those little rivets completely burgundy because they're gonna have a gleaming dot of gold on the top. See, we're doing the edges of all of the metals here. There's a lot of, I, I almost like drawing involved in painting metals. Okay. Make that little dot dark. It dries, it dries matte, right? And that's what we want. We want it to dry matte. Okay, so now we've, if you want to, um, when I, whenever you do weathering, if you do, if you do want to do any kind of scratches and stuff, wait till you've painted the entire thing and, you know, make it completely and then weather it down later. Okay, I'm just putting my burgundy into the skulls, into the eyes of the skulls. All right, let's look at chat. I, I see something on there. Armor painters have a good cheat for highlighting damage. Paint the highlight first and then put the darker paint on top. It leaves a nice thin line. Yes, good, good. I'm glad that you told us about that. Thank you for mentioning that. All right, ready for the gold? I'm gonna use, we'll use a shiny gold, or I guess this guy is a bad guy, so we could use Viking gold. Uh, no, let's use the gold gold. It'll be a, a little gleamy. And then I'll show you, you do need to, to highlight gold too. Gold gets highlighted with, you can use the medium as well. All right, so now I'm using my gold. I don't have as many edges on this part of it, but I'm gonna do the same exact thing I'm gonna go in with my edges everywhere there's an edge. And I'm gonna paint paint that on. Ugh, can't see it too well. Maybe it's where it's darker it'll show up better. Yeah, it's better. Dot dot dot. Pretend you know where the light is, see where the light is. Right?
do the whole little skull gold. Edges, edges, edges. This is not a high contrasting gold, but uh, hopefully that burgundy will help. All right, I'm gonna go over here. I'm looking where the where the light is highlighting it, and I'm gonna put that's where I'm putting my my little highlight. All right, now I'm gonna mix a little bit of my metallic medium with my gold to get my final highlight. Actually, maybe just a little bit, just barely any metallic medium. Can't wait to play with the shadows. <laughs> All right, so again, on the rivets, this is the gold on the rivets. And just a little bit of white medium. Let's see if that makes a difference. Ugh. Wet palettes do thin things out a lot, so Metallics sometimes are better off without um, without a wet palette. Okay, so now if I want to highlight that gold a little bit more, I'm using the silver on my edges only. See how that's starting to look? And again, same thing with the same thing with the um, the silver. The darker, the darker your shadows, and the more muddy and everything your shadows are, the more um, blinged out the highlights are going to get. Let's take a look at that. Does that look good? Take a look at that. He looks metal. He looks like he's made of metal, not paint. Put a little bit of white metal here, over here on this rivet. A little going around there a little bit. See? I haven't used any washes. Okay. Now if I want to add a wash. What I would do is I wouldn't add a wash. Mm, I'd use an ink, okay? Let's use an ink and see if I can find an ink here. Hold on a second. Ink is shiny, and sometimes it's nice to have a shiny. Here, let's use Ink Tense Violet, just a, just a tiny bit of that, and a tiny bit of black paint. Or we'll use the, the burgundy paint with the purple. Now if I go in here with my black ink, that gets even. And also purple ink on gold looks amazing. See how much deeper that got? For my shadows. There's something about the ink that makes it look more um, more deep because it's it's shiny. It it has more depth. If I do a little bit over here in the darkness, if I do it on top of that flat paint, but only use small amounts of it, I think it has more more impact. Let's see what happens when I do this. And you can you can play around with um, play around with the differences between the flat and the and the shiny ink. Right? Let's do a shiny. Yeah, ink works much better for the scratches. See that? Let's do a scratch over here. It's much darker, more pigmented. There. All right, you guys feel like that's a good class? Hey, Center01. Great metal, thank you. 
Does that feel like that people would get a lot of the, out of that? You try. You want to try these techniques on the spear for the predator figure. When do I use the blue, green, purple metal colors? So th let me show you real quick. So he's asking about like blue, green metal colors, and you can use those. I would get this down first, right? But blue and green can be used to basically mimic other things that are being reflected around. You know, I'm going to put just a little bit in this blade. It doesn't show up a lot in this one, but it can it can give flavor to your colors, to your metals. Right now it's looking even more like steel because I'm adding a little blue. It's looking more like steel, not silver. Let's put some on his helmet. For sure. Okay, I don't know if you can see that or not. So that is my metallics class. There's my basic class. Okay, let's do our skin tones class. This is our realistic skin tones. This isn't a regular skin tones class. We're gonna need a, I'm not gonna use paint brands. Okay, we're gonna use colors only. You're going to need an olive. Where's my other colors? Hmm. You're going to want, nope, that's not it. This one. You're going to want a, a dark skin. This is for Caucasian skin, by the way. This is your mid midtone is going to be one of those in between there. And then this could be a highlight. And then this pink skin can be a secondary highlight. And then you're also, you can go check out any of my other skin tone videos, right? I've got so many. You're gonna need a turquoise. This is a, supposed to be pastel yellow, hold on. Pastel yellow and a magenta. You're gonna need your three adjuster colors. Flavored to paints. <laughs> All right, so let's start out with our, our olive is our base for our skin tone. And the reason why we use olive is, be oh, what happened? That's weird. Um, olive is a good base for skin. I'm using a flat little filbert. Aw, Winter Wolf, Tight Studio, Mad Love. Let's write down this by the subscribers here. Give Winter a shout out. You want your geckos back. <laughs> Yay, good. I want you to have geckos also. Winter Tide Wolf Studio. It's been a while since we've hosted you because he's been a little bit sick. Um, but Winter is a friend of the stream. He also streams. Shoshi, if you wanted to put the varnish on the metal, would you need to put gloss on the highlighted areas and matte? No, so here's what you do. You might um, varnish it first and then go back and add your final highlights with your, white, with your white metal. That'll help a lot, okay? Lots of love. Oh, good. Um, and if you need to go back and touch some other reflective areas, that will help also. All right, so this is a barbarian. We're gonna make him nice and green. Notice he's got some zenithal highlights on him already. So we know where our shadows are already going. Okay. Get that cat hair off. Paint all of the skin green. Barbarians have lots of skin. Okay, get the hands. This is also one of my other intermediate classes. You really need to have blending down for this one. 
If you don't have blending down, you're gonna be struggling because it's not a layering class. I am de demonstrating my classes. The geckos have disappeared, but you're subscribed. That's weird. Try doing any of my emotes, jo Joanne. It's this, is it the same as wet blending? No, you're gonna be doing glazing with this. This is gonna be a different technique. We're gonna be glazing, maybe a little bit of wet blending later, but right now we're just getting our base coat of green. And if you wanna, um, so this is based on a, um, a Italian Renaissance portraiture technique called Verdaccio. V-E-R-D-A-C-C-I-O, I believe. I'm not sure about that. Verdaccio. And you use basically a green base because the peaches and all of the skin tone colors that get layered on top kind of act, um, this acts as a neutral shadow and it'll eventually kind of disappear on you as you're painting it because of the way the color theory on it works. All right, that's good, that's it. Fresco, yes, yes, exactly. And that's where it came from, Rin Twin. Thank you for that. It's exactly, it's from Fresco. Perfect. All right, so then we're gonna get our darkest skin tone color. I'm gonna show you what this looks like on my finger so you can see. There it is, Mark Goodwin. Thank you for the, the host. Emotes are back, awesome. I wonder, Twitch is being weird, isn't it, Joanne? Okay, I'm gonna put some of that on my palette. That's my first layer, and I need a, a nicer brush for this, for this technique, like my Winsor Newton. I'm thinning out my, my color, I'm thinning it. And I'm gonna have it, let's see. Let's see if I can make the right amount of consistency with this. I think it's gonna be, like right, no, that's pretty light actually. It's gonna be a glaze. You need, you want it thin enough that you can see paint. Yeah, it's a, it's a glaze. You should be able to see that little bullseye through it. It's probably actually right here, okay? It was popular in Italy, absolutely. That's where it was founded. That's where they found it. Okay, so I'm using his back for starters because it's a great place to start. There's all this real estate back here and I'm gonna glaze. If I get this too thick, I need to thin some of it out, right? And I'm pushing this, see that's too thin. You didn't even see the paint on that. Okay, I'm pushing the paint to the apex of these these bumps, right? I want the, the, the highest points on this back to get these little dots of paint, which means I'm pushing it toward that and I leave the paint to dry in the center of that. When I lift up, I'm pushing that paint. There's a lot of pushing and pulling with this technique here, okay? Notice I'm leaving my green in the shadows, but don't let it become too stripey. You got to blend. Oh, J. Crod, hey, how are you? I missed your sub. Thank you so much. How is it going? J. Crod seven 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 six. There we go. Give some hype for J. Crod as well. <laughs> All right, before this dries, see how that's moving around. I don't, that means I need to make a little bit thicker paint, a little bit. Oh, there we go. So this is the, the tricky part. I want some green to stay, right, in the crevices. But I don't, I don't want it to get too, too stripey on me. So I'm pulling that toward the apex, leaving, leaving the crevices to just have the thinnest amount of paint, right? It's as if 
you're highlighting. You're highlighting the green with this peach, this dark peach color. That's, that's what you're doing, you start. See that? And that helps create the different um, see that is very that's a little too see I need to make that a little thinner a little more gradual of a transition so if it's too green peach then it's it's too it needs a little bit more of a glaze in between right we don't want it to be solid green and then peach see how it's getting more and more peach but the green is still there. Please ask questions because I need to need to know how to like show this to my students in a way that they'll be able to easily do this. The, the benefit of the students is that they can try it and I can correct them as we go. See where the light is? I'm just getting, highlighting each muscle group. See the shoulders up here are going to have the most light so they're going to get the most paint pushed up to them. Ooh, see that's too thick. Right? Pull that around. Let's get that top of his shoulder. Is it green for the cool tone, like pink, red for warm tone skins? Um, so this is Caucasian skin model newbie, and um, the pink and red would that. So like, remember when we did the redhead? We did the we did the red underneath. But I mean, I would still do green for a redhead as well. So I don't want to get into other different color skins. I'm just doing Caucasian for this one. But yeah, you will do different undertones. For di you do red, like a dark burgundy red for a darker um, skin tone, right? You would do a burgundy red for a dark skin tone, not a light skin, not a light skin tone. I keep green for Caucasian. Okay. See how I left most of this part back here behind the thigh, that stays green but then the whole top of his thigh is mostly peach. Again, we're highlighting all the parts. These streamers, look, he took this flash cast at Adepticon. She corrected us by smacking our knuckles with the ruler. No, I didn't, Black Skull. <laughs> and Lamunas was in the class. He knows. You could use this in the reverse for orc skin. <laughs> I don't think so, Bolos. I mean, mm, mm, I don't think it would work. Orc skin. <coughs> hold on, hold on one second. <coughs> I'm choking on my own spit. Orc skin, you would start with, yeah, no, you would use it in reverse. No, that's actually right. You would do the green. No, I take that back. You'd still do green, but you'd highlight much smaller, much thinner. You'd still do it this way. I might use a little bit more yellow as my highlight so that it would still appear more green green, right? But I would still use a skin tone. So like if I were doing, I don't want to get into the other skin tones because I'm trying to I'm trying to teach the Caucasian guys, I love you, but let me stay on track. She yelled at me, tell me I was doing it wrong and to get out and never return. Guys, this is not the time to troll. This is for my peoples. <laughs> they are telling me lies. That's why you're still my mod, right? Because I yelled at you and told you never to come back. He needs a, he needs a, he needs to use the Shoshi emote when he's when he's being sarcastic. Otherwise, I don't know. All right, notice I'm pulling that, leaving that little bit of green. Speaking of my former students, if you guys see me 
skip a step or or say, okay, watch this. I'm gonna paint the highlights on the tops of the chest. Right, so you le look at how all of a sudden we get some, you don't, you don't quite read it as green anymore, right? This is all a color theory technique. That's why it works the way it does. All right, I'm gonna get more of this peach on top because this is gonna be the most highlighted part. Right, most highlighted part is gonna be here and here. See that, see what I did? There's your, there's your sassy emote. <laughs> this is really cool, you've never seen this done. So if you guys haven't already seen it, I have a, a YouTube video on, on YouTube, a YouTube video on YouTube, and it has, it's called the, the Flower Witch skin tones video and it's a really good start to finish um, example actually it might yeah it's, it's pretty it's still on there and it's still pretty popular see how I left that little bit on his knee is green so using this Verdaccio you get more realistic skin tones they don't look like they're made of plastic does that make sense? They don't look like you've got plastic paint on them. They look more like paintings or, or like real people. I'm using pretty thick paint on the fingers because I want the green to disappear a little bit more. I don't want green in, you don't, see, watch this. Oopsie, I messed up. Trying to keep the, the green in between the crevices of the fingers. You want to keep that. So make sure to paint each individual, each into what individual finger. Last bit right here. All right, good. Now, make sure to go back and highlight where you got the most light. Pushing the, pushing the, pushing that down because this part is the most shaded, so. Okay, this is my second layer on the backs of the shoulder. See how we're really building, building those lights? This has some green in it, but it, it's also mixed with the, uh, the skin tone. Okay. Let's get that last bit of thigh because see how green that is. We don't want that. I've got a couple, di I've got lots of different skin tone videos on my, on my, um, my YouTube channel. Now our next color is our next, we're going to mix a little bit of the base color with this next lightest color because we don't want it to go straight up in value. We want a somewhat of a transition. To be fair, you were very patient with us considering it was a Sunday morning class last day and you were pretty nervous. You learned a lot, truthfully. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, if there would have been a couple lights turned on in the convention, I agree. All right, I'm mixing this 50-50 light and medium with my two colors here. All right, so same thing. This time, we're gonna get a little smaller with our highlight because we're getting a little bit more volume, right? So the highlight stays. You're gonna be a lot more careful. See, try to blend. Don't leave a chunky don't leave a chunky uh, highlight where you can see the edges of it. You want it to blend into the last highlight. Okay. Same thing here. See how I'm, 
I made it. I started it much smaller, just down at the bottom here, because this is a a second highlight, and then a little bit, a little bit on the top of this this one. Same thing, smaller. That's looking good. This part of the muscle is going to get a highlight, right? The top of the muscle. Kneecap, pulling it down to the kneecap to give that. Blend it so that it doesn't look all crunchy. This model has a little bit of errors in it. It's not like the best model in the world, but it's a good teaching model. All right, so again, this is gonna be the best highlight across the shoulders, right? And then we can glaze it down the back, blending it in. And then there's gonna be another little highlight here on the apex of that muscle. Let me look at chat. I see it's going by quick. <laughs> Javasuko, this is a, a, Reaper, a Reaper class I'm going to be teaching next week. And so you guys get a basically get a preview of what that class is going to be like. But it's also for the benefit of my students who are going to be there. They're going to want to be able to, you know, go back and look at this video and check out how it was made and also so they can, they can follow along when they're home and refresh themselves on the class. So that's why it's not a KDM model. I, I paint a lot of other things too. That's the other reason why. All right, so there we go. And oh, and the reason why it's not KDM is because I'm at Reaper. They sponsor all the models, right? It's a Reaper convention, not a KDM con convention. That's the other thing. All right, see that big green stripe in the middle of his back? It's a little too stripey for me, so I'm just gonna see if I can put a little glaze of skin tone over the top of that. Blend that in a little bit better. I like my greens to be there, but not too, not so much, not so dark. All right, see that shoulder doesn't look right. Let's blend that in. Part of it's because it's just, it's not put together that well. There we go. Maybe I can fix it with paint. Okay, that's step three, right? We have first green, then our dark base, then our light base highlight. The server is dying, oh no. <laughs> it's going in 80s again. I'm so sorry. Thank you for that. Um, it looks like G CG mini painting. Thank you for the for the raid. Hype the laggies. All right, we'll try to wrap this up pretty quick. Um, all right, so the next stage is um, our Reichland flesh shade. Let me see if I can find it or. You can use here's Reichland flesh shade. This is our secret, secret thing. Vanquisher, hello, hi pipe. Is is it still wonky model newbie? 